I am here with the MD and CEO of TCS, Rajesh Gopinathan, and uh, he's been at the helm for an entire year now. And uh, Rajesh, uh, first, of, first of all, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, well, because I wouldn't say it's been a volatile year, but it hasn't been an uneventful year either. So let me start off with a thread that you've spoken about in the past, and that is uh, the advent of fintech. You had raised concerns and you had eventually also dispelled some concerns with respect to fintech and disruption on banking. Uh, there were suggestions made by you that uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of these banks could actually adopt some of these uh, you know, technologies and otherwise start a new business with a completely different DNA. That's where I wanted to ask you, what role is TCS playing in terms of this? So uh, we have been steadily playing a fairly significant role on the transformation from a fintech perspective, mm -hmm. but uh, more in terms of fintech adoption into the mainstream banking spectrum and incremental transformation at the bank side right. rather than uh, fintech as a separate uh, line of business mm -hmm. or a separate investment side. And we are, what we've seen is that during the course of the year, the focus is shifting back. Um, banks are doing two things. One is they are taking the technology concepts from there and looking at how to integrate that into their value delivery uh, yeah. framework. And also they are trying to see how to actually participate and create an ecosystem play. So uh, this forms the theme of uh, this framework that we have developed called the Business 4.0 Framework, right. where uh, one of the big components of it is the focus on ecosystems rather than individual enterprises. Mm. And uh, FinTech is a great example of where you see large established enterprise leverage its capability yeah. and then uh, amplify that by uh, combining with the FinTech universe so that it's not a either or scenario, but it is what is the combination value proposition to the client yeah. rather than uh, direct competition with each other. So you're moving into that kind of an era and in that space, when the, both the adoption inside the enterprise as well as the need of the enterprise to integrate with this ecosystem increases, right. uh, TCS's participation is very high. Okay, and Rajesh, you are talking about moving into that era. You also suggested that you are working with clients, you're experimenting with clients to identify successful ideas, uh, especially in the, the banking financial space again. Uh, in that case, what trends are emerging now? And again, what is TCS doing there? So it's across the whole spectrum. We are seeing uh, trends emerging in terms of uh, front-end transformation, where essentially the whole idea about customer segmentation is getting redefined. Right. And uh, we are seeing narrower segmentation to the extent of a segment of one, and even transaction level uh, areas. So for uh, one of the things that we're doing with uh, BFS space mm. is how to embed uh, the transaction benefit into let's say an e-commerce offering or right. into a more static kind of a website of another client and uh, see how that can be deeply integrated without disintermediation uh, requirements. So this whole idea about uh, looking at transactions as the uh, space where segmentation is going to be playing rather right. than uh, the customer as an entity, that's one big space that we're seeing. Other is adoption to of or approach towards risk. Uh, rather than think about risk from a purely mitigation perspective, uh, how do you actually embrace risk at scale and then manage it at scale is another big area that we're seeing a lot of interest coming out and a lot of focus that we are uh, putting onto it. Okay. Uh, coming down to digital services, uh, you guys just signed a very, very large deal. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the biggest digital deal of $50 million recently. My question then is, over the next one year, one and a half years, do you expect the deal sizes in the digital services to be still a little bit lumpier, or can we, in your uh, you know opinion, start seeing progressive trends now that these deal sizes in digital services will start looking at, then this will be a normal size eventually? I think uh, we are seeing a distinct move towards increased deal sizes. Mm. Uh, so the way to characterize it is, uh, digital is no longer about proof of technology right. or a proof point of a given individual process. Yeah. So we moved away from that. We had moved away some time back, away from this cool factor. That it's right. not about a right. pretty website and not about pretty pictures. It's about actually using these technologies to transform core processes. So that's a totally different uh, battleground. And within that, the reason we are seeing larger deal sizes is we are able to stitch together a portfolio 
that spans the full spectrum. So right. uh, it is about going away, uh, going all the way from the front end to be able to go to the back end. And how do you see that as a, as the service offering is really where the opportunity lies. And within that space, we are seeing a lot of increased uh, offtake and demand. Right. So Rajesh, again, I don't know how uh, you know, new this space is for the entire world, but there are suggestions made that there is uh, int intensifying competition from uh, uh, relatively smaller Indian companies. There are uh, challengers like Luxoft, EPAM, uh, Virtusa coming in the free as well. And of course, uh, you know, your regular competitors like Capgemini and uh, Accenture also in this place. Then. And considering, you know, when it comes to digital services, we're not always going to see 35%, 40% growth because at some point in time, you will see that base, large base to come into play. In that case, how does TCS, you know, place itself in terms of strategizing and how does it deal with competition? I think a lot of commentary in the market is a factor that the market is saturated with analysts. So right. uh, okay. we have about 40, 50 analysts uh, tracking us. Right. And uh, probably that is true for most of the companies. So this need for a uh, differential point of view, mm. I think, is uh, resulting in a lot of uh, commentary that is coming out. Right. Some of the companies that you spoke about, uh, their heritage is a heritage of not being able to defend their own base. And they are essentially adopting delivery models and mechanisms that we had perfected. Mm. And uh, that's hardly a you know, reason to suddenly uh, get worried about where the thing is. Others are coming in from a legacy of Eastern Europe and uh, more uh, freelance consultants being clubbed together into larger groups. Mm -hmm. So uh, none of the ones that you spoke about are uh, per se significantly uh, changing the competitive landscape okay. and uh, creating a great disruption. Right. I think uh, the disruption that we need to be worried about is more in terms of is there a disruption to the delivery model that is going to come from technology mm -hmm. and that is a spectrum that we need to be focused on and that's a spectrum that TCS is actually uh, embracing at a scale that is unprecedented in this industry. So we are focused on uh, three big areas, we're calling it agile, cloud and automation. Yes. And in agile, uh, the, the scale at which we are adopting it we think that we will redefine the concept of Agile the way we did quality about 10-15 years back. So when we actually adopted quality at scale, uh, the industry had not seen it. I'm not talking of the Indian industry, I'm talking of the entire technology industry had never seen quality adopted at that scale. We are trying to uh, do the same thing to Agile and uh, making very good progress on that space, which is unprecedented in this uh, world because Agile is being seen again like those old digital projects individual small co-located teams, whereas we are introducing the concept of location-independent agile and uh, completely changing the approach uh, to it. The Similarly, from a leveraging emerging technology perspective, we are adopting in a very significant way a concept called the machine-first delivery model, yes. right? MFDM, which is a, a very unique approach towards development. And again, the trick is to be able to adopt it at scale. So technology-led uh, transformation is where the opportunity is, and we are leading the market in that right. uh, rather than uh, location-led uh, changes. Right. Rajesh, you know, uh, uh, coming down to the retail uh, vertical, there is a little bit of a gap in commentary. Uh, and again, uh, you have indicated that uh, the worst is behind for retail. But there are again a lot of reports that uh, you know there could be some lumpiness, there could some, be some more volatility. How are you gauging this trend or is it that this trend is different for you as TCS as compared to the rest of the industry? No, I think the important thing is not whether it will be lumpy or not. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that uh, when we look at our client set and the people that we have worked with closely, uh, we have seen a transition from a period of uh, not knowing how to react to the onslaught of e-commerce right. to being able to adopt e-commerce and use that as a lever and to move the uh, basis of competition mm -hmm. away from the traditional basis of competition. So traditionally e-commerce competed essentially on a value proposition of price. Right. right. Yes. What we have seen retailers being able to do and we have worked very closely with many of them 
is to change the value proposition to customer experience mm. and to think about the uh, transaction not as the individual sale of that product or a good but the lifetime ownership of that product so a great example is what we're seeing in the home electronic space that uh, the question is not can you buy the tv cheaper or uh, better in some other place right it is about you just don't just buy the tv you are now having an entire household full right. of uh, interconnected devices and somebody who can actually help you navigate that spectrum uh, has the contextual knowledge of understanding what you have and therefore what should be the next incremental one right. to make sure that it works together right. is where the sale is shifting to and that completely changes the competitive dynamics so we've been able to work very closely with uh, retailers like Best Buy, with mm -hmm. Home Depot, and uh, help them in this digital transformation journey. And uh, that's where our uh, commentary is coming from. And we are quite, uh, you know, quite confident about that shift. And we think it will come in multiple categories in retail. We are working across a fairly large spectrum. Right. Uh, the uh, other large deal that you spoke about, uh, coming from Marks & Spencer, they are going through a similar transformation at their uh, end. And the CEO is very, very focused on that digital agenda, and mm. uh, we are helping them in that transformation. So you are seeing category after category in uh, digital, or rather in retail, shift to a basis of competition where they have more than evened their uh, uh, battlefield with e-commerce. Right. That doesn't prevent uh, some amount of uh, lumpiness, but essentially our commentary is based on this agenda and our ability to participate and lead that transformation agenda. Okay. Uh, then uh, coming down to the deal that you signed with Rolls-Royce on Internet of Things, and you just spoke about interconnectivity of different devices. Uh, I wanted to understand what role TCS is playing here and what is the scope of Internet of Things uh, eventually as we move into the next uh, few years, for that matter. Our uh, role here is end-to-end uh, uh, -end and transformative. Mm. So uh, we have developed a, a framework, uh, the TCS uh, Interconnected Universe uh, yes. Framework, which we call TCUP. Um, that's being adopted at scale by uh, Rolls-Royce. And uh, it will essentially form the fabric that will help them stitch together this common integrated platform that they're trying to build out. Yeah. Uh, the opportunities are practically limitless, both uh, in the Rolls-Royce case and in a more generic uh, sense. I think uh, as uh, we move more and more towards interconnected devices, we will be able to optimize the application of many of these technologies right. so, uh, for different different use cases. So you will see more complex services getting built on this fabric. What is coming in place is, uh, in many ways it has been spoken about before, that you are first seeing the network coming in place. The network itself will form the fabric on top of which many new services will come. So we think uh, it will be a transformative uh, scenario, which is why we have put a very significant amount of uh, management bandwidth to drive the IoT agenda. And we are participating across a very wide spectrum of companies in IoT. Fair enough. Uh, you know, coming down to uh, put what potentially could be plans in the, in the near future, that is uh, the synergies that Tata LC or Tata Technologies, um, you know, possibly can offer TCS, and I'm not suggesting that the merger is on cars, or I'm not even going to ask you that. But what are those synergies that can complement TCS as we move in? I don't want to comment about individual companies, yeah. but as we have always maintained, we are focused on seeing whether there are differential capabilities, capabilities right. that can come from services, capabilities that can come from industries, or from market access. Right. And if we find uh, appropriate opportunities, at a right price point, we are always game. But uh, as you know, acquisitions are not our uh, key growth focus. Mm. Right? Uh, we don't have a stated strategy saying I'm going to spend so much money and uh, X percentage of my growth will come from acquisition. Right. Uh, we are not in that business. We are primarily focused on organic growth and uh, we continue to stay to that as our primary strategy. Okay. Uh, then let me come down to uh, your margins and um, again, I wanted to understand what is it that's going to drive, eventually drive TCS's margins as we move into the next couple of financial years. Because I, from what I read is that TCS has a, a very healthy hedging book. So if it is not going to be currency and if you leave currency out of the picture, 
what is it that's going to drive it to your targeted uh, range? Our uh, operating margins have never been uh, impacted by our hedging choices. Okay. So the way we report our numbers, hmm. uh, hedging gains or losses are shown below the operating income. Right. So uh, what you see at the operating level is the raw set of numbers. It's hmm. business and uh, wh wherever the currency is. And that's where you see it uh, flow through. So the margin equation is about uh, scale and participation in newer areas. I think what's most important in our industry is that you have to stay relevant to the customers and stay relevant with the uh, changing technology trends. Right. In any given technology trend, as it scales up, you will see uh, margin defense. In the early part of it, you will find uh, investment that uh, impacts margins. And at the later uh, leg of that technology, the commoditization erodes margins. So this, uh, this you know, the continuum is uh, given in this industry. Right. And as we keep on participating in newer areas, like I spoke to you about Agile, about uh, automation, etc., mm -hmm. or the whole digital scale that you spoke about, right. uh, that is where the margin difference will come from. Okay, the, well, fair enough. So then, uh, let me also address your legacy uh, services. Uh, you know, we of course we've seen some deceleration, but this, uh, to a certain extent, I understand that we are all, they're also look, undergoing through a meaningful transformation. Uh, that said, how are these relatively larger clients who still work uh, in the traditional way, using agile and cloud for transformation, and how is TCS helping them? We are very excited about uh, what is going on in that mm. uh, space. So, uh, you know, at a very conceptual level, what we are seeing is that uh, clients want to uh, have a transformation agenda and they want to have an optimization agenda. And Agile and Cloud is the way that brings it together. So, uh, they are trying to uh, essentially optimize where our value proposition to them is how do we reuse the enterprise assets that currently exist? Applications, right. application functionalities, data, put them into platforms which can be consumed across the enterprise. Yeah. And cloud is an integral part of that transformation agenda. Having done that, having exposed those uh, capabilities, how do we make them uh, consumable by business in a more dynamic way? And agile as a development methodology is the one that actually steps in. So you are essentially seeing organizations go through a multi-layer transformation agenda. Right. Uh, they are converting their uh, existing technology assets into platforms that can be consumed internally. They are changing their internal uh, IT and business delivery teams into more integrated teams with us. So we are going and becoming much more embedded and much more closer to their business design. And we are using Agile as the methodology to, uh, you know, to drive that transformation agenda. So we are seeing this across a very large spectrum of clients. Even uh, the deals uh, that we have announced mm -hmm. is an example of uh, this. So cloud and Agile with uh, automation as uh, another layer that comes in in between. All three, the three focus areas that I said, right. is very core to the transformation in the way both technology is delivered as well as consumed by our uh, client set. Right. Fair enough. Uh, and my final question, Rajesh, is then, you finished the year. Uh, what are the ongoing challenges that you're facing right now that uh, you expect to you know, face further on? And how are you uh, dealing with those challenges? I think uh, both from a challenge perspective as well as from an opportunity perspective, uh, technology is becoming so integral across our uh, customer set that uh, solution sets are uh, much more integrative. So uh, the real opportunity is that we see the ability to stitch together um, many components inside TCS to form a holistic solution. Mm. And they are traditionally siloed by verticals. So. Uh, you have something called a high-tech industry, you have banking industry, you have, uh, let's say, CSPs as telecom as an industry, right. where uh, and you have manufacturing. But right. if you take connected car as an opportunity, it actually cuts across all these uh, industries. So the opportunity is that we have capabilities that are uh, across the entire uh, landscape. And the challenge is to make sure that we are able to bring them together to address the uh, opportunity at hand without uh, losing the efficiency that we have uh, had. So that's the, uh, that's the next uh, leg of uh, right. this transformation that we need to do. Fair enough, Rajesh. We wish you all the best in tackling those challenges as well as uh, continuing to uh, take uh, and lead TCS ahead. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. 
And once again, all the best for the future. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.